Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's better. And welcome back to uh, another video here in the off grid garage. Today, I want to talk about the. <laughs> Today, I have to talk about something I did. <laughs> And it's not good. Um, you know the project we are doing with the solar gate replacing two... Uh, we are replacing two of these gel lead acid batteries with the lithium iron batteries from used laptops. And we did this workshop recently where we repacked all these cells together and packed them in new packs so each block here has the same capacity. This is all good, this is all fine. At the moment we've got two of these gel lead acid batteries in the solar gate and of course there is a cheap WPM solar charge controller in there. I took this out a few weeks back and checked it all through actually and it wasn't too bad and obviously this is a fixed this is a fixed hardwired ready programmed WPM controller so you cannot adjust any voltages nothing you cannot even read anything there it has two LEDs on it like overcharge and battery empty or something and this is basically it but I took it out of the box a few weeks back and checked it all through here on the workbench it kept the 24 volt battery in a relatively good state of charge it didn't overcharge it didn't undercharge so the controller is actually not too bad for lead acid batteries but now when we replace them with the lithium iron batteries this controller won't work anymore of course because we've got slightly different voltages and we need to set certain parameters to keep the lithium battery healthy and happy so what Andy did is looking around online what is available and I thought well we've got two 20 watt solar panels no that's not true do we? I think it's only 10 watts 10 watts now 20 yeah yeah now that's all good now we've got two 10 watt solar panels at the front gate so we're getting like 40 volts and half an amp maximum with these solar panels so this is all the current these batteries will get which is totally fine with the lead acid batteries and is also fine with the because the gate will be operated like two times a day or something. I'll talk about all this later on. Um, so I looked around what kind of 24 volt controller I could use for the solar gate. And quite a while back I ordered this Win Wincon, Wincon, yeah there it says it there. The Wincon SL03. That's a 12 or 24 volt WPM controller, but you can program all the parameters yourself. So this works with all kind of batteries, not only lit acid or flooded batteries, all kind of batteries because you can set all the parameters yourself individually. Very good, very nice. I'm very happy with this controller actually. This is a WPM, it's not an MPPT, so the efficiency may not be as good as the, the other controllers, but from I had this running now with a battery here on the workbench for probably two months now and it's a really good controller. It even has a USB port here to charge your phone directly from the solar. And it has a little display here and you can click through all the parameters of course and it gives you all the information on the display here. It was like $35, $40 or something including shipping, AliExpress, link is down below. So really good, I can really recommend this controller because it is so easy to set up and program. It is really good, really nice. So I bought this one to set this one up with the lithium batteries in the solar gate, hook up the solar panels and everything would work just fine. So this is, this is my backup plan now. Then I thought, well, why don't you put in an MPPT controller and have a little bit more efficiency with this controller because the battery capacity of our lithium pack now is more than twice as big as the one from the from the um, gel batteries here. So I thought, well, it can't hurt, you know. And if you watch my car channel, you know, in winter time, sometimes when we have cloudy weather here, the the solar gate doesn't work in the morning anymore because. There was not enough sunshine the day before and the batteries died and the controller just shut off the load. 
So I thought, well, bigger battery, better controller, makes sense, right? <laughs> we do, we're doing everything new now. We reconfigure the whole solar gate. So I found a really nice MPPT charge controller online on AliExpress. Fully adjustable, the same as the um, WPM controller here. Works with all kinds of batteries and even has Bluetooth. Right? I said, hey, that's good, because the controller will be locked away in one of these boxes at the front gate. And I just can rock up next to it with my mobile phone and check all the settings inside without actually opening the box and then having my multimeter with me and checking all the voltages and amps and everything. I could do this with a Bluetooth app on my mobile phone, right? So I thought this is a really good idea. And it was less than $100, including shipping from China to Australia. I said, well, why not give it a go? It looks really good. Get this bad boy in and test it. Well, and here it is. This is the SN, SN, NMP, SMP, SN, jeez. What is it called again? Ah, here. An SRNE MPPT, 20 amps. So it's so it is for 12 and 24 volt systems, auto solar charge controller with for lithium, blah, blah, whatever. 20 amps, heaps of amps, you know, we've got only 0.5 of an amp anyway. Uh, with Bluetooth, $72 Australian. And you can already see there's a dispute in progress. Well, I'll tell you about this in a second. Uh, $72 plus shipping, $16. Well, this came on top. And I had to pay GST import taxes. So it's just under $100, including shipping and taxes here to Australia. So I thought, well, this is a well spent $100, right? I bought the 42N10. This is the smallest one, the 20 amps. And we can hook up up to 520 watts of solar. Uh, charging efficiency 98%, yeah, whatever. MPPT tracking efficiency 99%, sure. And so, yeah, that's it. That's the information. Has a big, big heatsink on the back here, metal. So it looked really good. Yeah, well, it took about four weeks to get it in, and it came, well, one and a half weeks ago. And since then, I'm testing it. I set up the app as well on the mobile phone so you can change all the parameters and everything and it has pre-configured profiles for gel, for flooded, for all kind of batteries and you can go to a user defined and can set all every single parameter individually just yourself as you need it and I thought wow that is great because you can really stop charging the battery the lithium battery at 80 percent state of charge and then discharge it to only 30 percent or something and then keep charging it again and it keeps the battery really in this middle range you want to get to keep the battery healthy over a long period of time you know that was the plan that was at least the plan and i'll show you quickly this app here as well so here's the solar panel 13.7 uh, the current half an amp, six watts at the moment, and this is your battery. It gives you all the information about the currents and uh, capacities, and this is your load parameters down here. And this was turned off from the beginning, and I tried to turn it on, and it didn't work. You know, and I said, "Damn it, something is not right with the app or something." So I did some research and everything, and couldn't find anything. But it's just turned off. I could not turn on the load. Well, and then I realized. There is not even a terminal for the load. This is only a four terminal solar charge controller. So you've got your solar panel positive and negative, and then you've got your battery negative and positive, and that's it. While the other one has six, two for the solar, two for the battery, two for the load. So this one controls also the load. If the battery gets too low, it turns off the load and turns off my, my solar gate, you know? To protect the battery and this makes sense this one doesn't this one keeps charging the battery if, if it's empty but it won't turn it off and i had this once already here when i charged my cameras and everything from the solar with this controller the battery was down to eight volts only so it was discharged way too much but the controller well it cannot control it there's no output for the load i checked of course the order and everything and well, this is what I've ordered. This was 
this was like this on the website, you know. It wasn't their fault, it was totally my fault that I ordered this controller without load, without load control. And here I am, you know. Well, and then I started testing the app and the controller and everything and said, well, something is weird. Because at the moment I have hooked it up to one of the smaller panels here, the 20 volt panel with 2.2 amps maximum current. And look at this, it is almost six o'clock. The sun has almost set and my solar panels are on this side of the roof, so far away from the sun. And the app tells me, the app tells me I'm still getting 30.7 volts and 0.43 amps, which would result in 6 watts. I said, wow, we're still getting half an amp. Even the, the sun shines on the other side of the roof. There's no sunlight hitting this solar panel anymore. And we're still getting 0.4 amps out of 2.2 amps, which is the maximum of these solar panels. As you know me, I did some more testing and checking. So for example, now when I check the current coming from the solar panel, it is only 100 milliamps. But the app shows me 0.43 amps. I said, well, that is weird, hey? 80, 80 milliamps now from the solar panel, 70, and this makes much more sense. And I checked this all with my other multimeter here as well and get the same result, you know. The current is really, really low and still the app shows you, wow, you are charging with 0.43 amps. No, I'm not. This is less than 100. And the same with the battery. See, it claims it pushes still 0.48 amps into the battery. Well, if we measure the battery here, the current, 40 milliamps going into the battery. Not 400, only 40. So, and of course I kept digging, so I measured all the voltages as well. So the app claims 13.7 is the voltage of the solar panels. But in real life we've got only 12.9. So this is off by over by almost a volt. The battery voltage is 12.9 and the app shows me 12.8. So this is fine. You know, a little bit of tolerance is there. There are different devices measuring differently. So 12.8 to 12.9, I wouldn't say anything about this. But the solar voltage and current are super off. They are totally off, right? And you know what's coming now, right? I took a lot of photos and claimed the dispute with AliExpress now for this controller. I said, this one is not correctly calibrated. It is already faulty. I measured totally different voltages and currents for the solar side and said, this is not right. It's not matching up. The app is far too high. In reality, we are far lower. And I cross-checked this all with the other multimeter, same result. So the multimeter is fine, but the app is shit. Well, and since then I'm in discussion with the Chinese manufacturer or with the Chinese shop of this beautiful MPPT solar charge controller here. Because they sent me a photo and said, oh, you're doing it wrong, you are measuring it wrong. You need to do it like this. And look at this photo. They really want me to measure the current directly on the terminal. So positive to positive, negative to negative. What would happen? Well, you make a short. It's already night. Both cameras were empty. Then I recharged them. We had dinner. And now I've forgotten where we were. I think we were talking about the dispute, right? So I claimed this dispute with AliExpress because this is clearly not right. You know, the current and the voltages are not showing correctly in the app. They should match up. They should, they should, very, they should be very close together, you know, and not miles apart. And obviously they've got no idea what they are talking about. They've got no idea how solar charge controller works and how to measure a current instead of measuring a voltage. So I faked the picture then, I, but I pretended to measure the current directly at the terminals. You know, if you want to measure the current and put your probes positive and negative into the terminals directly, it's a short. You know, that's not how you measure currents. You measure current in line with the load. And I emailed them all this. And now, well, you are now in this loop, you know, they're repeating themselves and I'm repeating myself. And 
it is they are non-technical persons now which deal with this whole claim now so i have opened a dispute with aliexpress instead and said look this is the situation i've done all the testing they wanted and i think the chola charge controller is faulty or not calibrated and i've asked them for a full refund so let's see what happens yeah and then i need to make the decision if i have a look for another mppt controller or if i just go with this one and see how we go I definitely need one for lithium batteries, which I can freely program. And I don't want to charge them to 100% all the time. And I don't want to discharge them to 0%. So I want to really keep them in the middle. And we've got so much capacity with these lithium batteries then, I can easily do this. All right, guys, anyways, this is how far I am with my solar charge controller for the uh, solar gate. I haven't, I don't know, I don't know what I should do now. Should I, should I look for another MPPT controller for there or should I use the WPM controller which will work totally fine. I think from a charging perspective it doesn't really matter if we use the MPPT or the WPM charge controller in this case. You know I thought it's cool we have an MPPT controller getting the maximum charge and also it has Bluetooth. So I can just stand somewhere in the, in the front yard and then check the solar charge controller and the status of the batteries with my mobile phone. But neither of this is now happening apparently, so I don't know. Yeah, this is a total f up at the moment, so I don't know what to do. Not everything is perfect here in the off-grid garage. I make mistakes as well, you know? And it's not a big deal. We get this sorted somehow. We get this sorted. We've got a plan B. All right, anyways, guys, thank you so much again. See you next time. Bye-bye.